Hello everyone and welcome back to our Portuguese homestead. So today I want to do a video that I haven't done in a while, a, a talking video. I wasn't really able to do one of them because I was too sick of course uh, to do anything let alone think and talk and talk to the camera. Um, but I have over the last couple months a year kind of thought about this issue that you can see in the title of course so today I want to talk to you about animals on a farm um, from my particular perspective as an ex-vegan and why I now feel that um, animals are part and should be part of a healthy a agricultural system on a small scale on a larger scale and just part of a healthy ecosystem so if you are interested keep on watching if you want to maybe learn a little bit more think hear about what i think about this get a cup of tea because it's going to be a long one i think maybe i'll start with why we were vegan in the first place if you've been here for a while you would know that we i was vegetarian from 18 on 28 now so almost 10 years i didn't eat any meat um, and then about five six years ago we went vegan as well uh, because I realized that the dairy and egg industry is just um, the other side of the same coin. And then over time, um, I think it's become a lot more clear the last decade that um, animal agriculture also has major influence on the environment and the amount of um, greenhouse gases that are emitted and of course we know that all those animals have to be fed so um, major parts um, uh, of the Amazon are deforested just to grow corn and soy to feed all those animals so it's not it's not part of a healthy system it's a lot sustainable in the sense that the earth can simply not sustain this type of uh, eating this type of diet where people eat meat three times a day um, eat lots of cheese so many animal products so we have to think of a different way and over the last year or so I've kind of realized uh, and learned lo a lot more about regenerative agriculture which is a system or a system which is a way of thinking about agriculture where you give back more to the soil than you're taking um, and you're kind of thinking more in systems and um, how can we set it up in such a way that we can actually keep this going for a long time. As small farmers I think we can kind of do this on a small scale. We keep chickens now only for to for the eggs so um, in setting up our systems now I'm kind of going back to the basics of okay we want to be self-sufficient we want to produce most of our own food or at least a large part how are we going to do that so we need carbs we need fats and we need proteins what are the sources for that producing so many beans as we used to eat um, and processing them, uh, harvesting them. I don't think it's possible for a family to produce so many beans that they can actually uh, balance their diet. So in that sense the vegan diet is very reliant on bigger uh, 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 on bigger agricultures where you use lots of machines and maybe that's okay for uh, people who live not like us um, that's a different discussion but for us to do it that way um, is just not a thing um, so we have to think okay where are we gonna get it from the reason that people have kept chickens for such a long time is because they're very good at making a great protein source from bugs and grass and seeds and whatever they eat and um, so they're really good at converting something that's not edible for us to something that is edible for us maybe in the future we'll also keep animals for dairy or meat um, I mean setting up a homestead is a five to ten year plan I think 
just thinking about those basic things of what are we going to eat. I think animals can be a very good part of that and maybe even have to be a part of that. Other than that, of course, animals are really very good at um, feeding back the, feeding the soil with their manure. Um, the chickens roam around, they're feeding the olive trees at the same time. Um, we get, right now we still get horse manure from a friend to just produce the uh, potatoes and the veggies that we need for a year. I mean, you can try composting that much, but I don't think you can. Um, so we do, of course, compost. We do a compost toilet as well, but that's not advised to use that in your vegetable garden. So animals are part of that system of eating the grass, eating the bushes, whatever. Um, and then giving you something back in return also to feed the soil. So that kind of brings me to this idea of regenerative agriculture. You have to feed the soil um, and you can take from the soil but right now it's just so important um, to get the soil back to a healthy a healthy way of being and um, animals are a part of that. So if you think back before there were so many humans on the planet, before there were states and borders and private property, it was really normal for big groups of grazing animals to like come through an area, eat everything and then move on. Um, it's still done in some parts of the world of course, but here there are no big herds of cow or um, other grazers that come through the olive fields and kind of move on because we have borders and we have property um, and those kinds of herds just don't exist anymore. For a while, well, for quite a long time, the commons were a great thing so people would um, herd their goats or sheep or whatever um, in areas and like move on and take them to other parts of mountains and fields and whatever. Um, but now commons are also not a thing anymore. I would love to get back to a system like that. Uh, again, another video, uh, but I, I did talk about it a little bit in my Patreon live stream. Grazers are an essential part of an, an, a healthy ecosystem because they keep brush down in forests, uh, they keep fields, um, they feed on the field and then that cycle of the grass being eaten and growing back is really important in um, carbon sequestering, big term. It's just taking in carbon, putting it in the soil instead of just having it go everywhere, <laughs> simply said. Um, so when I think about it in that way, I just don't see a world. Now we're getting a little bit philosophical. I just don't see a world where um, grazing animals are not part of the system. Like, okay, so if we have a vegan system, how is that gonna look? Because then we need to farm so much protein. I mean, yeah, sure, maybe we'll have, we'll need less land because it's, in that sense, it's a more efficient thing. Um, but then we're still uh, farming on a scale that is just too big. Uh, we really need to get back to small scale farming. Farmers that really put in the work, um, maybe not such giant machines as we have now because you can't do that in a healthy way. Not that I know of, maybe you do know. Um, so we need, really need to get back into a smaller scale system. And then animals are just a part of that. And living in the world that we live in now, our modern world, we have to think in what can, how can we rethink the system, knowing what we know from science about how um, grazers are so important to kind of do something about the climate crisis. So a couple of things that are important with that is that we go to a system where we use rotational grazing. 
So that's really a small scale um, of what I just described with the herds that go whatever they want. If we have um, a couple hectares, or however many hectares, you can think about, okay, um, I have so many hectares, I have so many animals, kind of put them in electric fencing, whatever people use, and kind of uh, move them along so that the soil has time to recover. Um, the grass has time to grow back, uh, which is also healthier for the animals because they can get lots of diseases from being in the same spot for too long. So if we use this system of rotational grazing, that's already much better than just having plots with how many animals you can fit on there, getting in feed from somewhere, the soil, I mean, you know the pictures of those feed lots. They're dead areas for plants at least. Another layer to that is a system called silvopasture, where you create a pasture among the trees that you already have. Um, so we can do that amongst our olive trees and on the hillside amongst our cork oak. Um, and silvopasture is just, uh, once again, an old fashioned way of doing things where you um, have trees that give you something. So we have oak trees, they give us acorns. Um, you can do uh, more chestnuts um, where you can eat the chestnuts and then the, the olive trees that have an obvious source of food. Um, so then you have multiple um, uses for the same piece of land. First, that means that we don't want to introduce animals to the land too quickly and we really want to be conscientious of how many animals the land can actually take. In the future, uh, we'll get more chickens, more ducks. Once we have a pond in the bottom field, um, we want to get a donkey because donkeys are so cute and they're actually um, good grazers. Uh, they eat a lot. Uh, they leave your olive trees alone. Maybe we'll get some goats or some sheep or some pigs um, because all of them can be a good source for meat. Um, but that's why we're no longer vegan. Animals and life and death are part of life. And maybe like stepping away from that is just denying uh, some harsh truths of life. These are some of the things that I've been thinking about a lot, um, especially now that we are living the reality of trying to be self-sufficient instead of it just being a numbers game or like a concept. So I hope that made a little bit of sense. It's something I wanted to add to the discussion, um, to the reality of um, small scale farming, being an ex-vegan because for environmental reasons and then realizing that maybe that is not the way. I would love to hear your thoughts and feelings about where we're we going with this. We need to rethink everything in our agricultural system. So let me know. Um, next week we'll be back to homesteading in Portugal, what that looks like. And I'll see you guys then.